there. How are you doing today? Do you know what kind of animal I am? That's right, I'm a dinosaur. I'm a Tyrannosaurus Rex. I have long, strong teeth for eating meat. Can you show me your teeth? <laughs> you got those teeth. You probably couldn't even eat a duck-billed dinosaur with those. I also have little arms with two fingers that are great for scratching my belly. Can you scratch your belly with your T-Rex arms? I also have a great vocal ability. On the count of three, make your best T-Rex sound. One, two, three, rawr! Great job. Some scientists think I might have actually cooed like a dove. Ooh, ooh. Others think I might have been best at making low pitch sounds like this. Crumble, 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 crumble. Paleontology is pretty cool. Hey, speaking of which, I bet you're wondering how my bones got here at the academy. Do you want to learn how a dinosaur turns into a fossil? Great! In order to do that, we must travel back in time to when I lived in the late Cretaceous, about 68 million years ago. On the count of three, let's make some time travel noises. One, two, three. Ooh. I think it's working. Oh, wow. We made it. Thanks for your help. It sure feels good to be back in the flesh. Many, many kinds of dinosaurs were around in the late Cretaceous. Some were very small. Like me, Bambaraptor. I'm about the size of a turkey, but I like to gobble up meat. Don't let my small stature fool you. I'm a fearsome hunter looking for some dinner. Rawr, rawr. <laughs> oh, Bambi Raptor, such a character. Well, some dinosaurs were huge. Much bigger than me, even. Like the Alamosaurus. My neck alone is about 25 feet long. That's as long as a double-decker bus. Can you stretch your neck out like me? Keep going. Keep going. Hmm. Seems like you all need some practice before you reach those treetops. Wow. Well, the ancestors of you humans were around too, but they look pretty different than you do today. Oh, gee, you don't see any other, um, big dinosaurs around, do you? They sure are impressive when they grow up. I think I'll, um, well, I'll just stay back over here for, uh, well, let's see, maybe for uh, a few million years. Ooh. <laughs> well, as you can see, many amazing different animals live during the Cretaceous. But how does a dinosaur turn into a fossil? Well, it all starts after a dinosaur dies. Yep, it's true. We dinosaurs couldn't live forever. Some dinosaurs lived long lives and died naturally of old age. I move very slowly these days. But that's okay, because I don't have to chase after my food. I love plants. Rum, num, num. Mm -hmm. Well, then there's meat eaters like me that did chase after their food. Mm -hmm. You don't scare me, Rex. I know you don't want me to use these horns. But I better be moseying off anyways. Mm, guess that meal got away, but that's okay. I already had an Edmontosaurus for lunch. <laughs> but back to the point. Many dinosaurs just had some pretty bad luck at the end of the Cretaceous. Oh, wow. What a lovely, peaceful night. Just look at the moon and all of those beautiful stars. Wow, and, um, oh, wait, wait a second, what is that thing coming? Does, does anyone know what that is? Is that, a, oh, an asteroid? Well, I gotta get out of here! Yep, 
an asteroid about the size of San Francisco crashed into the Gulf of Mexico and led to the extinction of the dinosaurs 66 million years ago. Hey, except me. Tweet, tweet, tweet. We birds are dinosaurs too, and we survived. Oh, tweet, well, tweet, tweet. Right you are, my feathered tweet. friend. Glad you chirped up. Tweet. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's talk about how I ended up as a fossil which thankfully happened a little while before the asteroid. Dinosaurs that were able to fossilize, like me, got buried very quickly when they died. I remember it as if it were yesterday. A volcano erupted and filled the sky with ash and soot. Can you make a volcano erupting sound? My body was quickly buried under layers of ash as it rained down from the sky. Over time, the soft parts of my body, like my muscles, my organs, all that good stuff, went back into the ground. Soon, all that was left behind were my hard, strong bones. Then, sediment like silt, sand, gravel, slowly layered and built up over my body, pushing the ground I was buried in down deeper and deeper. Meanwhile, and this part took a while, groundwater carried the minerals through the holes in my bones. Hi, I'm water, but my friends call me H2O. And my name is Silica, I'm a mineral. Together, we are an expert fossil making team. The minerals slowly, slowly turned my bones into rock. Now for the easiest part. I had to wait millions of years. Will you wait with me? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Just kidding. What happened next was pretty neat though. The ground above me changed a lot over time. Rain started to wash away loose soil, dirt, and rock. Can you pat your legs to make a storm sound? And wind carried sediments away too. Let's try it out. Can you make a wind blowing sound? Whoosh! Wow, after 68 million years safely underground, my bones made their way back up near the surface, where I had to have one last little bit of luck. Oh, hi there. I'm very glad to have you all here at our dig site. I've been surveying the scene, and I think we have uncovered something truly amazing here. I can just make out the skull of an animal poking out here. Let's use our tools and discover what fossil this is. We'll just uh, brush away some of this extra sediment here. Yes, and... <gasps> oh my goodness, Eureka! I think that we've discovered the fossilized remains of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. This is incredible. I have to get back to the California Academy of Sciences so I can tell my colleagues all about this amazing find. Let's go! See? I told you I was special. Have a great day and thanks so much for learning with me. Give yourselves a big round of applause for being an amazing scientist. If you're ever at the California Academy of Sciences, make sure to come see me in the front lobby and touch a real dinosaur bone in the Naturalist Center. Bye bye! Thank you so much for joining us on this paleontological adventure. Learning about the past and about fossils isn't just fun, it's important. It helps us learn more about the challenges that life on Earth has faced in the past, which can help us prepare for challenges we face now and in the future. And together, by learning about our planet, we can make it a better world for all of us and protect it for generations to come. Thank you so much for joining us and learning with us today. I hope you have an excellent rest of your day and we hope to see you soon at the California Academy of Sciences.